Hello and welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're very, very welcome here today. It is, always have to look, 22nd of June 2021 and um, I'm just thrilled to be here. Um, if you've been with me before, you'll know I've had a bit of a break. If you haven't been with me before, I'll just quickly say that um, in my last podcast, I mentioned that I needed surgery and um, the surgery came along very, very quickly within um, two weeks. Actually, this day last month, I was in sur this date last month, I was in surgery. And um, I just want to thank everybody so much for their kind wishes of, of get well soon. They're praying for me, whatever. And um, I have to say, probably yesterday and today have been my best days. Um, the surgery was very successful and did what it was meant to do. Um, um, but bending over is still a bit of a problem. So I've got my trusty grabber. I'm sure um, any of my lovely friends with uh, her wheelchair users or have disabilities know that everything ends up on the floor. I have never experienced myself dropping so many things and um, just wish everything in the kitchen was a foot, foot higher. But everything is going well and I really want to thank you so much for um, all your lovely wishes um, over the last month. I really do appreciate it. Now, where you can find me, <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at Ruth Loves to Knit. I'm on uh, Ravelry. I'm going to mention it this week for a very specific purpose um, as Crafty Mad Midwife. And I'm uh, also available by email on Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. Now, I'll warn you right up front, this could be a long one because I haven't spoken to you for well over a month. and. Um, I have, as you can imagine, in recovery, been doing a lot of knitting. So, um, might want to get coffee, tea, soft drink, whatever. Get your crafting and um, either watch it in chunks or just sit down, put your feet up and relax. And we'll have a good wee chin wag together. I'm going to be looking over at my notes so I, so I don't talk for longer than I'm already planning to. And um, yeah, I'm just really glad to be back and really glad to be feeling so much better. Um, yeah, so that's it. So before I do get into the knitting though, I do want to say one thing. A very, very happy birthday to my lovely friend Jess. She does the Two Sticks and Strings podcast. If you don't watch her podcast, pop over. She's been doing uh, lovely days out videos recently, which I'm very jealous of. And um, be warned, she shows some lovely food as well. We just want to say a really, really happy birthday to you, Jess. And I hope you have a lovely day. And uh, maybe talk to you later. All right. Um... That's it. Okay, so FOs. Well, if you may see, the sun is shining here in Devon today after a beautiful stretch of lovely weather, then some days of horrendous weather, then a beautiful day. I decided the best thing to do was put on a black top. <laughs> but it is, um, an, it is an FO, so, you know. And by the miracle of medical science, I say no more, I can now wear sweaters again just leaving it there some ladies of a certain age will know what I'm talking about too much information I know but anyway um this is the let me see I'm all disorganized I haven't done this in a while this is the now I'm going to say castellette would that be all right you can see the lovely eyelets there now this is a fantastic pattern it's one page <laughs> It's a free pattern on Ravelry, um, and the front is the picture, and the back is the is the pattern. Couldn't ask for better. And I did this in um, King Cole. Excuse me for the, just looking out the, the bits. So King Cole finesse. Got all my tags together. Um, I bought this um, last year. Sorry, there'll be lots of M's today as I get myself back into this uh, in my local yarn shop, Woolly Beater in Oakhampton. Hi, Laura. And um, I bought it actually to do a cardigan and whenever I, I brought it home and looked at the pattern I realised the, car the cardigan was seamed and I don't have time for that these days. Um, so that idea was shelved and it sat in my stash and I thought the very thing, it's cotton and silk DK. Now if you watched my last podcast I said I won't be knitting anything, any jumpers, I won't be knitting anything in a DK, so just ignore 
all those things I said um, in my last podcast. And, um, these come in 50 gram balls and it was lovely to knit with, but um, the only thing I would say about it is all I've done is soaked it, I haven't washed it, and um, it already needs gleaned. So, um, but anyway, it's what you pay for, isn't it? So um, I used, for my size, which was the largest size, it's not awfully size inclusive, but I'm not a small girl and um, it fits me fine. I'll show you in one wee minute. I used um, um, only 696 meters. So, but in the pattern, the eyelets is actually nine. It's a lovely, I love a circular yoke. It sits well on me. Um, it's got um, nine rows of eyelets and I just thought nobody needs to see what's under there. So I just did six and I'm happy enough with that. Now, standing up might take me a wee minute, so just bear with me. And if you see more than you bargained for, I apologize now. But I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, and it just comes just where I want it. Now, the only thing I would change about it, and I did it, oh, hang on, <laughs> sorry ladies, gents, well, I'll not be able to show you. It's just a ribbed hem, and it's just a hip length, really, just maybe just, just down to the hips. Now, the only thing I would change um, is that um, I did the sleeves a wee bit longer, but I think I would do them a longer again, just to cover up those um, bingo wings. And I did a few short rows in here, um, as it, the way the pattern was, it would end up like that. And I just did a few short rows back and front just to make it a bit longer. But I think if I did it again, I actually have yarn left. I could make it a bit longer. Um, I think I would, I would put them down a bit. But I'm chuffed to bits with that. Not my usual black. But no doubt I'll uh, have a wee something over it. But it's quite cool to wear um, and easy to slip on. I would definitely knit another one. It's so quick with DK wool. Well, when you're used to mostly knitting in fingering or oh, knit up really really quickly. Um, I even might would maybe do one um, without the eyelets because I just really like a, a round yoke but that's DK King Cole Finesse lovely to knit with don't know how hard wearing it'll be but it does have silk in it so I suppose and um, yeah I think it was only about 2 a ball or something so it's very manageable so that and that's a free pattern I think did I say that and obviously that was the colour of it that <laughs> that uh, drew my attention in the first place. Now, in this pattern, they do hold um, two two yarns together, which gives, I don't know if you'll be able to see, no, you can't, well, you maybe can see there's a bit of a halo on this one here. And it's, um, let me see what it is. Um, fig, fig I'll, I'll write this all in the notes. It's fig, Phil Colana, um, Tila and Arweta. Now, the only people I've heard using that is um, Penrose Knits has used it a lot. And you can get it from um, knit.co.uk, but I just use what was in my stash. But it would be interesting to see um, if you are a mohair lover. I think this would be an ideal, um, yeah, this would be ideal for mohair. And so that's my first finished object. And hopefully my face won't get too red as the podcast goes on. Now, this is all my stuff sitting around me because I can't reach down to the floor. So you'll have to excuse all the detritus. Now, a second finish object, if you remember back to my last podcast, if you haven't seen it, please go back and see it. Uh, and I did a segment on Rip the Whip. Some of you loved it and, and, and then were encouraged to rip back those whips that you had um, just had sitting in, in bags or in cupboards that you never wore. Some of you said <laughs> it was traumatic for you to watch that I was going to rip out these beautiful knits. But one of the ones that I, knit, uh, I ripped out, I had knit um, a... Oh, Hohi Locatelli simple summer sweater, super simple summer sweater, and it was the wrong fit, the wrong everything, and I ripped that out. And if you remember, the yarn um, was a lovely green, and then I had a lovely variegated yarn, and I decided what I would do with it. And um, I'll show you the finished object first. It's still damp, that's why I want to show you it first. And I decided to make a non show by um, Casapinka. She did this for um, LYS Day, I think. And if you bought yarn, probably from the American ones, um, yeah, you got the pattern free, but I bought the patterns, I paid for a pattern. And this is my non-show, of course, won't show, not showing even slightly. Oh, that's it better now. Yeah, that's it. And it's damp, so I'm not putting it on. 
It's got lovely details up the front. You can't see. And it just goes into a nice peak at the bottom. And it just comes down to, I suppose, um, here on the side that's shorter. And it's beautiful. Not really getting the true it's that's showing up get any closer to that's probably the right color there now anyway i'm going to put that over and if i need it again i can't reach it so we'll just put that over on the bed this is the spare room i'm using um and i'll show you what it's supposed to look like <laughs> and there's the nun show so she did a um fingering weight one which i might just do i love a poncho i really do and this is the this is the DK one. It's lovely. And I just did it can do it with three colours, and but I just did it with the two. And I highly recommend, obviously it's a paid for pattern. If you like a poncho, um it's absolutely gorgeous. And um again, because it's in DK, it's very quick to knit up. The yarns I used, how do I dare throw that over now? The yarns I used were the ones I ripped out from the other sweater, where um the plain green. The solid colour was Audine Wools by Knit Create and it's called Colourway Leaf Feeder, 85% Merino, 15% Cashmere. Love it. And it's a really big skein, 276 metres and 100 grams. And then the variegated was uh, Life in the Long Grass and it's um, a colourway name was Aquarium and it is 100% superwash merino and it has 225 metres per 100 grams. So that's life in the long grass. I got that on a de-stash on eBay. I used two of those and only one of those. And I still have 100 grams left from the original sweater that I pulled out. So I think a nice cashmere or something around your neck for um, the winter could be um, on the cards. But stick with me and um i have something else to say about this this yarn so don't be running away so that's my second finished object um and that's those those two are both cast on and finished since the last podcast but it was about six weeks ago so that's not surprising right i'll dare to put this out of the way that i can't reach it then my third finished last finished object is there was one day i was just sitting and it was pouring outside and as we say well since we've moved here we say devon is beautiful when it's sunny but it has noisy rain i come from ireland we know what rain is but where we live is right on the edge of the moor and girls i my friends call me ruthie by the moor <laughs> say no more and um it was pouring noisy foggy horrible and i just needed a wee rainbow in my life so i decided now I have been very good, there hasn't been much yellow in any of those things. I decided to knit a rainbow. And this is my Spectra by Stephen West. Now I haven't blocked this. I don't think I will, apart from maybe the end, because it's curling a wee bit. But if you can see, so I keep putting things in front of my face and talking, I do apologise. You see, the, the garter bit is kind of lifted up. And I quite like that, like the ridges. But this is, let me show you the man himself. So that's the Spectra by Stephen West. He um, sent out an email a couple of months ago um, to say that he was reformatting a lot of his older um, patterns and he put a sale on. That's when I get most of my patterns, either when they first come out when there's a percentage off or um, in sales and um, again it's a fantastic pattern one page that's it and um, I just saw it and thought that would be perfect just a scarf really there's I have knit one of my goals this year was to do some intarsia and I've never done intarsia before and this is just a very very simple intarsia of crossing over the two colors but I absolutely love it that's going to cheer me up no end in the winter time um, when I have that around me and the way that it's knit up it ends up like a circle see that it naturally goes like that it's not straight so if I put it straight it will go like that and the yarns I used 
far. Old Maid Nant. And that is 75% uh, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon and 5% Stellina. Um, and it's a four ply. There's 400 yards and 100 grams and it's a color, uh, the color is called To The Black. So it's a lovely wee sparkle, whether you could see it there or not. But that's Old Maid Nant. I've had that in my stash for quite some time. Lovely rocking chair. And then the rainbow is um, by one of my favorite dyers, Rainbow Fusions. And it's the colorway is Root Vegetables. And it's Superwash Merino Nylon. And this is just a wee 50 gram um, skein, uh, 212 meters in 50 grams. I used, there's about five grams left of the black, but there's about 15, maybe 17 left of the of this one. So if you have any sort of, you know those socks that you've knit and you've maybe 45 grams left of 100 grams, this would be ideal for it. And I really enjoyed it. It was all of these knits have been what I've needed in recovery. Not too much thought process, um, not too much counting. Now, the Spectra does have, let's throw the right way around. The Spectra does have short rows, um, but they're not the kind of short rows like in a sweater where it comes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's 40 stitches, so it's very, very simple. And after about two or three of those segments, I could do it watching television, no problem at all. The other thing, sorry, I meant to say, go back to the non-show. There's um, short rows options um, in it if you want, but the actual Casa Pinker herself said she doesn't do short rows, so I didn't bother doing short rows. I couldn't, there's only maybe six short rows. Um, so there's no short rows in my one that I knit, but there are, if you if you like short rows, there are short rows in that. Um, so that's the Spectre and that's my third finished object and I'll risk throwing them out of the way because I can't reach them. Right, now <laughs> I have a half finished object and of course I have a story. <laughs> um, the day I went into hospital I had to be there for half seven but I wasn't taken into theatres to half two so it was a long day to sit and of course I had my knitting with me, of course I did. had my socks, um, again the vanilla sock didn't need much thought process but probably I was a bit anxious or a bit not paying attention um, and I had to rip out the gusset twice but there was a lovely nurse who came over and um, Jane, hi Jane, who kept me very sane for a very many hours and said she knitted too and we talked about podcasts and we um, talked about patterns and all the rest of it and then she had to go back to work obviously but um, I had started, um, I told you before about the Marie Curie sock quest and I have um, quite a few balls of wool wound up for, for the Marie Curie sock quest and the main colour they want is yellow so as you can imagine I have plenty of yellow for those who haven't watched before yellow is my favourite colour despite what I'm wearing in most of my podcasts and I was, I thought I would start on my, on my, my um, Marie Curie sock quest well I had to restart when I came home and a very, very sad thing happened. I have lost my sock mojo. I have never lost my sock mojo. I don't know whether it's because I made so many mistakes in that one sock or I don't know. But I was watching, this tangent, sorry. I was watching um, Amanda of the Wee Shudderman game and I was watching Stitch, lovely Karen from Stitches and Jacks. And they had got these amazing um, mannequin feet um, to show their socks off because sometimes the wire sock blockers, it's very, very hard to see if there's a beautiful pattern down the front. So I thought, <laughs> right, I'll show you my sock first. This is a half finished object. I have started the other one, but only finished, the, finished this. So that's my half finished object. And they'll be perfect for the, just did a size six. They'll be perfect for the Marie Curie Sock Quest. And I hope you're taking part in that because um, it's a great wee way for our knitters to give to people who really um, need it for Christmas. Um, but anyway, back to my mannequin. As you can see, it's hard and it's firm. And I thought I had ordered this lovely white plastic mannequin, sort of yay high, um, to show off my socks. And I waited and waited and waited. And of course, it was coming from China or somewhere like that. So it would take a long time to come. And my husband came up to me, I was on in bed rest, and um, said, what on earth have you ordered? And it, the packet was ripped. So I ripped it open and this fell out on my bed. Well, if I hadn't been sitting down, I think I would have wet myself and fainted. Now, 
I've warned you, if you're of a nervous disposition, look away now. You ready? <laughs> I hope that's not my YouTube thumbnail. This is what arrived. I'll show it quick. Right, that's what arrived for my, I don't know what I ordered, this wasn't it, but what when this fell out of the of the packet I nearly I squealed that only dogs could hear it and um this is what it came so I well don't know if I'll be using it too much but I laughed and it cheered me up I have to say once I realized it wasn't a real one so that's anyway put it back on that's my first that's my home and um, this is lovely um you see not organized this is um, actually I've knit a pair of socks in this wool already. This is Lay Family Yarn. This was the, the wool that um, she did for Bill's special bus. Always try and support any of the charities. That's my logic behind buying yarn. It's the Lola yarn and I used this for um, test knitting the Mistletoe Kisses socks last Christmas for Ellie of, um, oh dear me. Oh dear, Ellie. What is your podcast called? That's terrible. Anyway, um, oh, dear me. Anyway, um, Mistletoe Kisses Socks, and I'll put it below. That's terrible. So sorry, Ellie. Um, and that was merino, 70% uh, merino, 20% um, nylon, and 5% um, stellina. And everybody's probably screaming at the, the screen, but I can't remember. And then I just put a wee purple mini that I had in my um, stash. So that's that. And I, as always, I'm doing them on my, I'll just show you, I have started. Um, I'm doing them on my nine inch um, circulars. I use uh, Knit Pro Symphonies. Um, and that's Craft House Magic. Oh dear me. That's really... That's bad. I'm so sorry. Ellie's podcast and company is called Craft House Magic and she also sells beautiful hand dyed yarn. So those are just, I just keep those in my handbag. My handbag stays in the kitchen. If I'm knitting, if I'm making the dinner, um, somebody said to me, oh, they couldn't, they couldn't knit while they're making the dinner. We're from Ireland. We eat a lot of potatoes. Potatoes take quite a while to boil. So that's whenever I do my knitting. So there you go. So that's my finished object. And my hoe. You look at my notes. Oh, turn over the page, Ruth. Okay, so whips. Okay, let me think. Um, thanks to my uh, kamikaze whip rip, um, my whips are fairly down in the pile. But a first thing, um, let me get the right bags. Now again, if I drop any of these in the floor, I might have to go rummaging for them. Uh, my first one is, sorry, um, in my lovely Mrs. Brown's bags bag, perfect for this project. Um, my first one is, now I am not Swedish, <laughs> but I'm going to say the Nordbacken cardigan by Skin Deer Knits. This, um, pattern came out in 2019 and I bought it the day it came out I think because there was a 20% off and I bought a kit from Musol de Teague um, and I got a message to say that her shop was shutting down and I thought I still haven't knit with that kit so um, I got it out and I got stuck in the week before I went into hospital I thought the best thing to do was a colour work project <laughs> it's very very simple so this is my, the sun's just gone in, so the lighting's changed a wee bit. This is my Norbakken. And it's my first steaked project. So you can see the steak is there. Um, and um, I have to say, if you've never tried colour work before, this is quite an easy, you know, it's, there's, it's a single, single strand, you know, um, if you really um, wanted to go. And I think it's lovely. And normally, my normal thing is once I get about two inches below the splitting for the sleeves, I start the sleeves so that you're not turning and tossing and turning and tossing and having to twist. Because I use um, generally use nine inch circulars for my sleeves. Um, I, I've done magic loop. I just don't like it. D pens don't talk to me. Um, although um, 
I have got stoppers on there at the minute, so I might just use these until it decreases, get going. But anyway, that's the that's as far as I've got with the Norbakken um, tea, or Norbakken uh, cardigan. So um, I don't doubt that I will steak. <laughs> I will take a video of my steaking because my heart will be in my mouth. I've done cut in heels and things, but I've never done steaking. And there's my wee donut from uh, Bumble Stitches. Love that wee donut. Um, I don't wear much jewellery myself, but I love my knitting jewellery. And the yarns that I'm using now, the yarns she uses, she always uses quite fairly rustic yarns, um, Norwegian kind of derivative yarns. Um, but the ones she used, I couldn't get. So I ordered, sorry. So I ordered Phenol, Roma Phenol PT2. It's a lovely, it is, that's pretty much, it's a lovely mulberry, winey colour. And it's colourway 0497. Now the reason I haven't um, done the sleeves is because once I ordered what, you know, to my size in the pattern, very, very size inclusive pattern, but I noticed that hers, hers was not cropped, but just touching the top of her uh, hips and I would like it maybe a wee bit longer. So I thought I'll knit the body first and if I have to fangle the, the sleeves a wee bit, I kind of put more colour work in or something like that. And then this is the... the the lighter colour, it's a cream colour and the numbers of that is, I couldn't find the band for that bad, bad podcaster so the, the, the mulberry one is um, 0497 and the creamy one is 0401 in the uh, Phenol Rama PT2 and I got those from Azolda Teague but as I say she's not in business anymore. I think that's, um, I'm knitting them on my usual, uh, I'm doing, she, I think Norwegian patterns uh, traditionally um, don't hold your hand quite as much as the as the other kind of indie, indie dyer or indie patterns do, and it's very good, it's very easy to copy, very very easy to do. Don't get me wrong, you can very easy to read, but um, I do think um, it's left up to you a lot of what needle size you want to. She gives you an idea, um, so you probably would need to to oh, dare I say it, gauge swatch. And I decided to do the colour work. Sorry, I'm trying to balance this in my knee so it doesn't fall on the, the ground. Um, I did the colour work in a full size bigger than uh, the rest of the of the um, knitting. Now, I've noticed, <laughs> I've done two big mistakes. Imagine, imagine mistakes. And I'm not, I didn't think back, I'm going to duplicate stitch over it to correct it. Two stitches, I was not going back. And, um, We'll see how that goes now it's going to be very boring for the rest of the time for you to see because it's I've been only knitting on it this the body of it in my zoom meetings and um, so there won't be an awful lot to see probably um for the next wee while but as it's just uh, stock and stitch right down to the bottom then um rib so uh, but it's perfect for the way my mind was um after surgery so that's the nor back in right put that on the floor then um, I signed up with lovely uh, Amanda from the Wee Shudder Monkey. She has a podcast, I've said before, she has a podcast. That's where I saw the foot. Um, she has a podcast and um, she's a fantastic knitwear designer. Now, mostly shawls and things like, and socks and things like that. And I signed up months, well, months ago and said I would do one of her. So I'm trying to remember to look at the camera. I do apologise trying to I said I would sign up to do her a test knit for her and it's the bless her she messaged me um just whenever I'd said you know that I'd gone in for surgery to see if I still wanted to do it because maybe my mind wouldn't be on it but I said yes I still would keep my commitment and she was happy enough for me to go ahead and it's a bit random in the middle of June but she's thinking ahead obviously and her um Oh, typical, I haven't got the picture out. Typical, typical, bear with me. Oh, sure it's there. It's called A Happy Holiday Shawl by Shudder Monkey. And there's a wee picture of it. I don't think I'm giving it away, but no. There's a wee, you can see the candy canes. That's one side of it, and I'll show you the rest of it. In, and that's the other one. That's the back of it. Look. There's lovely beadwork on here, but I'll show you that in a wee minute. So that's the, the Happy Holidays shawl. And um, it's fully charted or fully written. Obviously, it's not out yet. It's a test knit. 
I imagine she won't be putting it out for a minute or two yet. Um, and um, I just love it. I'll shake the camera, that's fine. Um, and I've got it in my absolutely amazing bag. Look at this. Musical, let's see the monkey, or the, okay, so dear me, the frogs. Look at that. And that is from my gorgeous friend Sue. She sent me a wee present whenever I was just recovering from my operation. There's a wee tag. Uh, Sue Godfrey, handmade with love. I think she should sell these. Look at that inside. I mean, just, there's a wee tag. And it, I didn't even wait my project straight into it. Using my, of course, my, um, Line Keeper from the Knitting Gift Shop that my husband bought me for my birthday and I'll show you the yarn first. Now the pattern says it takes 600 metres and I am using oh, not the tags. I am using the Paul, Paul Ply Yarn Co, which you know is another one of my favourite dyers, in the colourway Stocking on the Fire. And I got obviously got this last Christmas. Um, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 metres in 100 grams. And I'll show you it in the cake. Oh dear me, I'm a fidget today. I hope this shows up because my camera doesn't like most of the colours I use. Nope. Well, you can see the orangey bit there. And it's just like a burning fire with embers. There's wee white bits, there's wee orangey bits, there's wee red bits. Perfect. Let me see it there there. Yeah, you can see the orange there. Why do I always knit in, anyway, in colours that my camera doesn't like? <laughs> and as always, I've got it in my sock sack from Amelia X Joy. And this is what I've done so far. So scared these things are going to fall on the floor and I'm not be able to get them. And as I said, it, it took 600 metres. Obviously everybody's different, but I have still got, I guess you had to rip back. I still have got, you know, a, quite a bit left of that first. And I'm right down, I've finished the main pattern. So, got it in my little, it's, people call this a DPN holder, but I don't use those devil sticks. And, um, but I use it to um, for my to put my uh, circular needle points in it, and this one's for, was a wee gift from so so yarn delicious. I really apologise. I always seem to talk with my, like with this up over my mouth, and I'm really going to try and stop that. And this is what I've done so far. Right side goes this way. See the beadwork. Now, I've never done beadwork before and after I dropped 20 on the floor, <laughs> I got the hang of it. it I did it the um, crochet hook way and I think it's really effective. I think it's really effective. So that's the middle of the, of the um, shawl. And then hopefully, <laughs> my knitting's right, you can see the candy canes. Can you see it? Maybe against my, see the candy canes? Some are up, some are down. And then, um, and it's the same the other side. And I've got, again, if you are doing uh, lace work, my biggest tip to you is to use stitch mark or poked stitch markers. And I use these wee ones. I never get this right. I use these wee safety, you know, the wee um, bulb, stitch, bulb stitch markers. That's what I'm looking for. And i am finished the body of the um, shawl. Maybe you can see the, it's just so Christmassy. And um, I'm about to start the border. It's an applied border, so it take, take a while. Like um, a lot of the I-cord borders and things, it takes a while, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've dropped it on the floor and there's no resurrect in it. <laughs> and uh, oh, um, I'm using, I've dropped one side on the floor. I'm using um, fixed actually just because I had them. Knit Pro um, Symphonies are these? Knit Pro Symphonies. I always use wooden needles. I just don't get on with metal needles at all. Even the clicking of them together gets on my nerves. But I know everybody has. That's one thing in knitting. Everybody has their absolute personal preference, don't they, to, to what they knit with. So that's the test knit. And hopefully that will get done, finished this week on the floor. Um, 
for Shutter Monkey. If you haven't knit any of her, if her other patterns are as well written out, I'm supposed to be testing it in this and it's, there's not even a grammatical error. It is fantastic. Um, I bought two of her other shawls. She did a little sale um, maybe a oh, month ago, more than that. So I'm, and they, I bought those and if they're half as well written as this, it'll be a pleasure to knit. This is going to be, my husband's going to have to pick all this stuff, stuff up off the floor when he gets home because I'm just chucking it on the floor. So that's that and um, then maybe I'll keep my last whip for the next wee bit. Now, some exciting announcements. If you have seen my Instagram, um, I have joined with lovely Fernanda from the Little Monkeys and Me. I'll put it all down, don't worry. Um, she's in America, she's in North Carolina and we've just struck up a really lovely friendship. Um, as I said, I've mentioned her before, she's absolutely my heroine because she homeschools voluntarily and loves it. Um, she seems very, very sane, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm only joking. And uh, we've joined together because we both love shawls. If you've watched this um, episodes before, you'll know I, if that would be my desert island knitting, I don't know why I would want to knit a shawl on a desert island, but um, I love them because one size fits all. I love them because of the, they can do lace, you can put any colours together. I wear them a lot. I don't know whether it's because um, of the years I was in Bangladesh, worked in Bangladesh, I wore chadors a lot. And so I was used to wearing shawls. I wear them bandana style. I wear them to the side. I, I always, always have a wee shawl at some point. And um, I just love them. And if you haven't, if you're wondering how you, there's videos on YouTube, how to wear shawls. You can do them from a one skein through to a slanket. We have decided to start and do a cal. So we've named it across, across <laughs> named our own cal, I can't remember. Across the Pond Shawl Cal. That's for um, Instagram, there's a hashtag on Instagram. I am in, looking at the Instagram hashtag and um, Fernanda has, has opened a Ravelry um, group under Little Monkeys and Me for chat and for FOs. And um, please get involved. If you maybe take it as a chance that you've never done a shawl before, you want to try it. Maybe there's one of those fancy Stephen West shawls that you've always been dying to try. Come on and try it. Get chatter going um, uh, or just put a finished object photograph, be as involved as you want. Um, show us your yarn choices, show us your pattern choice. But it was brought to my attention that there's actually a shawl called Across the Pond Shawl um, by Mina Phillips. And I didn't know that. I hope Mina doesn't mind us using this hashtag, but it wasn't already used on Instagram. The, sorry, before I forget, the other way, if you don't use either Ravelry or Instagram, is you can email me and I will make sure that you're involved. Um, and again, my email is Ruth, I loves to knit at gmail.com. And if you email me questions or whatever that's fine um but if you want to put a finished um object photograph in in the competition it's not a competition it's a cow knit along um you can email me that is clear as mud but um i think that i might do the cross the pond shawl by mina phillips i don't think there's anything given away um it's a really lovely shawl. You should go and have a look. And I bought it um, off Ravelry just to make me feel better that I wasn't using her um, hashtag or anything. I don't think we are. Um, and there's a small version, a large version. So maybe that's some wee one that you could look at. I was going to bring some of my shawls to give you ideas, but this would be a three hour long podcast. So maybe next time um, I'll show you some of them. But if you want to see them, I've nearly always put them on Instagram um, when I finish them. Now, some of the rules... Let's face it, they're not going to be hard and fast. It can be knitting or crochet. I've been asked that a lot. Please, please, if you're a crocheter, get involved as well. No shawls or cowls. A wrap, certainly, if it's a nice big wrap. It can be, as I say, a one skein shawl to 25 skein shawl, whatever you want. Um, written it down, it'd be better to read it. Whips are acceptable, but please, less than 25%. If you're doing a one skein shawl and you've a half done, then come on. You can enter as many times as you want. Um, and there'll be a prizes, of course. There'll be lovely prizes. Because Fernanda's in America, I'm here. We can cover the whole world. And we'll show those later on too. I'm not going to show those now. 
So get involved. Oh, I'm excited, but a bit scared too. I hope people um, enter. Let us see your yarn choices. Let us see your pattern choices. Put them up on Instagram. Put them in the Ravelry. Um, there's a bit of chat already in the Ravelry post. They'll be prized for chat. Uh, Instagram, Ravelry, we'll get everybody involved. And um, I really hope. So it's across the pond shawl cal. Knit cal, if you haven't done one before, it's just a knit along. But please, crocheters, you, you get involved too. And I would love to see a, shawl, a crocheted shawl as... You know, I'm a very, very beginner crochet, um, crocheter, um, and I would love to see what people can do with their crochet, and it would just be amazing. So get involved if you can. This is going to be the longest podcast known to man. I do apologise. We're getting there. So one of the shawls that I'm going to do, I've already started, but um, less than 25%, I promise. And the shawl is the new one. Sorry, I've written all over this and it's in black and white. It's not really going to show you very much. It's the Curvette Shawl by Stephen West. Doing this again, putting things in front of my face. Sorry. And, um, sorry, I did do it in black and white. It's a four skein shawl. Um, well, of course, you know, Stephen has to go, you go big or go home with Stephen West. Um, I did the smaller one there the the spectra um and he encourages you it's it's alternated with um mohair i am not a mohair girl i don't know whether it's the trauma of the 80s early 90s or I, if you know me i have a bit of a thing with cotton wool wasn't good when i was a nurse <laughs> tell you or a midwife um and i just don't like the feel of mohair but saying that a lovely friend sent me some skeins of yarn there and the mohair's in it and it's gorgeous so on the head but I decided I wouldn't use mohair that I would use lace and I'll show you what I've done so far before I show you the um, yarns I'm using and I've shown the yarns on Instagram if you want it better so this is what I've done so far the curvette shawl it's curved that's oh, I'm so scared these things are going to drop on the floor and I'll not be able to get I'll not be able to get them that's what I've done so far so obviously that's not even Definitely not 25% finished. <laughs> um, and I'll show you the yarns. So, what one's that one? So the first yarn, they're all, the first three are from, I bought them when it was Mr. B's yarn. Now it's Yarn Street UK, isn't it? I'll put it down below, sorry. Um, you know, Bird Street UK. What am I talking about, Yarn Street? My brain, sorry, anesthetic brain. This is the first one. Now these came as a fade set and being the professional that I am, I took the tags off them and don't know which way, which one's which, but I'll show you them anyway. So I'm doing it that way. Gorgeous fade. And then my, and I'll not be able to hold these, sorry. My fourth one, of course, I had to have a pop of colour, is this one. I'll show you the label. I'll show you the labels in a wee minute. And then I decided to use lace and I decided I was going to use black lace. And I ordered some Malabrigo black lace. And when it came, it had been vacuum packed. Fantastic. Cheaper for me to get, I think it was free postage because of that. I couldn't get it apart. I, I couldn't even get it apart to put it on my Swift. So um, it's all being sorted out. The company's brilliant where the, that I got it from sort out. But I went into my local yarn shop, the Woolly Beater in Oakhampton, and was going to buy some um, West Shorter spinners, but it was grey rather than black. And she said, hold on a wee minute, I might have what you're looking for. And she went up and got into her own stash, bless her. And this is what I've decided. Lovely variegated purple, which is in, there's purple in, the purple in that. So it goes brilliantly. Now, the labels. I said Mr. B, now Birch Street. And one is graphite, one is stone wash. I think the darkest one is stone wash. They still do these colours um, from time to time if you want to. And the next one is inkwell. So that's the three Mr. B's is the three first ones. And then that lovely um, one with the lovely pops of colour is um, Needle and Fred and it's called Disco Goth and um, it's lovely, I really like it. And then my um, thread, my thread, 
My lace is by The Yarn Collective. And it's in collaboration with um, Melanie Berg, who obviously, if you know if you know shawls, she makes beautiful shawls. And it's called The Magi Magician. And it's um, colour by 208. And there's 860 metres on that. So I'll probably have loads left over. So that's my idea. I'll just drop that on the floor too. Um, so that's my idea for the Curvette shawl for uh, my entry. But knowing me, I'll probably, obviously we can't win prizes, but it's just nice to take part in your own um, cal, isn't it? So the Car Curvette shawl from Stephen West, um, rubbish photograph, but you can all look them up and see that. And um, it's very, very simple pattern. For his own admission, it's, it's very simple. So if you've been down to do a Stephen West shawl and you think it's beyond you, they're not. He has the ability to make difficult looking things so simple and maybe this is a chance that you want to go for it and, and do one of Stephen West shawls um, and that's and I might do that one and maybe just cast on the across the pond shawl too just for the crack as we would say in Ireland don't take that the wrong way anybody who doesn't live in Ireland so that's my first announcement I'm so sorry this is really lot I hope my phone holds out for this my second announcement is um, the uh, competition giveaway winners and um, last time I showed you two beautiful um, uh, patterns I was going to give away. One is from um, Thistle Glen Designs, the little tranquility shawl and the other one is a set of three as a collection, the Everyday Roses collection from um, Daisy Stitches and I did a random YouTube comment picker last night and the winners are the little tranquility shawl is Jennifer Tran. I'll put it all in, I'll put it on the screen. And the Everyday Roses collection is by Beverly Bullock. Now, if you could email me on Ruth Loves to Knit or uh, message me on Instagram, either is fine, and I'll get in touch and they're going to send, the, the designers are going to send them straight to you. Now, the Everyday Roses collection, I think the third one isn't out yet, so you might, so uh, Beverly, you might have to wait a wee while, but I'll let you know if that's the case. And uh, well done, congratulations. Now, my third announcement. <laughs> I was beyond blessed. This community is just the best community. Um, people knew I wasn't well. Well, I wasn't well. That's not the right thing. I was just needed an operation, and I was got so many as I've already said beautiful messages I got flowers I got gifts I got such gorgeous things and I just feel so blessed that I want to pay it forward I want to bless someone else now I've already blessed well I think it's blessed someone else in America and that cost a lot of money to send that so I'm afraid this one is for the UK only and my idea behind it is if you know someone who knits or you want to knit for them no I prefer some, someone who knits and they're maybe going through a rough time they've maybe had or come through a rough time and they could still just do with we pick me up you saw my non-show well I have some wool left from that and I want to pay it forward I have these Three skeins left. Now it's 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 more that's looking very teal. It's much more um, lighter green than that. Much lighter green than that. I just don't see how I can maybe take. It's no, it's not. Sorry. And this has got cashmere in it. And I worked out there's seven hundred and seventy seven meters. So that's a good wee amount that you could make, they could make something really nice with it. And look, I mean, look, it's so squishy. So there's, there's those. I promise they're lovely. And then I couldn't resist getting this for someone. Now there's two pieces to it. From, um, oh, please tell me there's the tag on it. Woolrich, I think. Oh, there's no tag on it. I think it's Woolrich Design. Oh, no, there they are. Handmade by Woolrich Crafts. And I saw this bag and I couldn't resist it. And I just thought, it says, follow your dreams. And it says, you're my sunshine, lovely purple bottom and the rainbow, of course. 
love and good vibes and it comes with this matching little notions pouch and we all need a wee lavender pouch too don't we so my idea is oh look i never even noticed that butterfly zip hole my idea is in the uk only sorry i have sent something abroad um if you would either put in the messages down below somebody with a, just a, little, a wee bit of detail don't be giving me maybe the first name or something um or if you feel you want to be a bit more confidential send me an email and um of somebody who deserves this wee parcel i'll maybe put a few wee stitch markers and things in as well somebody who just needs a pick me up somebody who needs a wee blessing and i will um forward that to them now the way i'll choose it is i'll get my husband to do it <laughs> i am far too no i think i'll just uh, literally put a name on a hat and um see what comes out and i hope that um i'll do it up nicely i'll i'll package it nicely and they'll really feel like they're getting a wee treat so that's my wee my wee thing just to pay it forward and bless someone else because i have it's just such blessings um oh my goodness 51 minutes so that's that's that and i just want to show you a couple of wee incoming things i have bought you can imagine sitting in bed recovering at home and the internet <laughs> i've bought some things but i'll show you those as i'm knitting with them um lovely jan from the faithful sheep podcast go watch her if you haven't watched her before she's so nice got in touch with me and knows i've got a real reputation for yellow <laughs> And she had got some yarn that she'd got in um, like, you know, um, monthly boxes and things and mystery things that she just weren't her taste. And would I like them? And she showed me three skeins and I said, oh, beautiful. But can we do a wee swap? And she said, well, you don't have to. I just want to, you know, she wanted to bless me as well. And I said, no, I would really love to. And so I sent her two skeins and a few wee bits and pieces thinking, well, I have that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad we've swapped. Such a fantastic. I love swaps, as you all know. Well, <laughs> hers arrived. I'm not going to show you what you sent me because I'll be knitting with it and I will show you then. But let's just say this box. Yes, it's a shoe box. In fact, it's a boot box. Does not hold two or three skeins of yarn. That's all I'm saying. I was blown away. In fact, I cried. <laughs> and even later on that night, I sat and looked through it again and I messaged Jan again and just said, oh my goodness, what a kind, kind person. Like, look, size of my head, full of yarn. And I've kept this box <laughs> so I could show you how much she sent. Thank you so much, Jan. I've obviously already thanked you a long time ago, Anna, but I just wanted to let people know what a kind so you are and to put them towards your uh, podcast. The next things that I got were, um, oh, turning around, sorry, it's not good either. Oh, the next things I got were um, from a lovely friend who I, none of, I have never met any of these people. These are just people I've got to know online during the pandemic. And um, she's from Northern Ireland and um, she actually lives very close to where I grew up. Um, for, for my latter teen years and she just out of the blue sent me uh, well she sent me a beautiful card really funny card get well soon card which was fantastic but then another parcel arrived and this little gem arrived probably this is called a one hour basket perfect for this time of the year I always have um, a hat on the go or something like that and I build up them build them up for the homeless and um, so I always have the stuff out and that's what I'm going to put in this just I mean yellow love it so it's holding my other things and i've said before that um i was a midwife for many years but most of those years were overseas in other countries and in london and places like that but um, I, when i moved back from bangladesh i worked in the royal victoria hospital in maternity in delivery suite and all the areas really um for seven or eight years and i worked with a lovely girl called michelle hi michelle um, and I said I worked with her. I worked in delivery suite with her, so we rarely worked close together because it's a busy, busy place. 
but and a bit different to America midwives in um North, in Ireland and England deliver all the babies and we only call the doctors and if there's a problem um but um she contacted me whenever I started this podcast and we got in contact again and she'd start she's always been a knitter I didn't know and um uh, was asking me she wanted to do a shawl and asking me a bit about it and uh, I'm sorry Michelle I she said she had no hand out to her and I sent her a package and I have got her down that slippery slope the dangerous path of love and hand out yarn I apologize sorry not sorry but she sent me a lovely parcel and I'm not sure you everything as she I say she sent me um lovely um wool with mohair in it but she makes jewellery. She sent me the most gorgeous handmade uh, bracelet. But I just wanted to show you some of these uh, Progress Keeper stitch markers that she said. I can't, can't be able to show you them all, but they are just gorgeous. Now, this is always a task, isn't it? Look at that. Beautiful. There's only a couple of them. Just, oh, where's the camera? Gorgeous. And I have a bag of them, just, and I use them all. I used, um, look at this one, all handmade. I think this is maybe my favourite one. Hang on to show you. I'm going to focus. That's maybe better. And they're all on wee hooks. Thank you so much, Michelle. Obviously, I've thanked you as well. And on that note, I mean, are people so talented? I just, it blows me away. And kindness. And on that note, my lovely friend Heather, and I wanted to show you, sent me a lovely card. And look at this, look at what this, this present was wrapped in. How <laughs> cool is that? <laughs> and she also sent me some uh, um, Progress Keeper stitch markers. And she said when she saw them, she thought of me. Like yellow. <laughs> and a gorgeous... Look, oh, hang on, what can I show you? sunflower and those are from Alice R Crafts there's more detail and I, I just love them I'll be using those as soon as as soon as I finish podcast how they just brighten up wouldn't they just brighten up a project so thank you very much ladies that is just a treat oh, just chuffed a bit uh, I'm blown away and then many of you know lovely Karen from the Stitches and Jacks podcast I've mentioned her already about the foot <laughs> And the Yorkshire Yarn Festival was on and I was having a really bad day, very sore, etc. And she messaged me and said, Ruth, I would love to send you something. Will you pick something? Well, there's no way I was going to pick something. And I said, well, just the hysteria, wisteria was the topic that the, the had to die. And what did she send me? My goodness. Look at that. Look at the mauves and the purples and from Ted Knits. And it's a sock set, not just... Um, Wisteria sock set, merino nylon, 75, 25, 425 in this, and 85 in the purple. Just, I just want to look at it for a while before I do anything with it. It's just gorgeous. Uh, thank you so, so much. And then last but not least, many of you will have um, heard me talking about attic spin, uh, attic spin dye. I always thought I say attic spin dry. Addict Spin Dye and they had a sale on. Danger, danger. They were giving it away. <laughs> they just said it would, they'd really reduced their prices, I suppose, to clear out for the new season. And of course I had to get something. Well, whenever I my parcel came, there was a wee extra. And the wee extra was this beautiful skein. Sorry, the sun's shining in a different way now. So there's their label. And I, it's just, but the best of it is, I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's not even showing up how beautiful it is. The best of it is, the name of it is A Moment's Rest. How cool is that? And all of their skeins come with a little, look, a snail. <laughs> they all come with a beautiful, and they all come with like a mini, um, all these extra wee goodies. And I can't thank Andy and Angela enough. That is just, what a treat. Thank you so much. So kind. But... Um, another thing that I bought from Addict Spin Dye, I have to really concentrate on that, is um, one of their wee pins. And I've mentioned, I think I mentioned once before that Angela, the other half of Andy, <laughs> um, suffers from a chronic illness. And they are really, really working hard to bring um, 
it to the forefront because it's an illness that it takes can take doctors years and years to diagnose and I want to show you I hope I can see it I've left the plastic on it maybe show you that's a wee sticker and that's a wee colorful rainbow zebra called spot and then their wee oh yes their wee pin us knitters love pins don't they don't we and I didn't take it out of this because there's a wee tag with it and I want to just I want to just bring it highlight it here too because I suffered probably three years of off and on what I felt was agonizing pain was it brought me down it made me miserable but some days I had it some days I didn't some days were good some days were bad but I knew if I could get an operation things would be sorted but there's people and I know many of you watch me that that's not the solution and the, the condition is, get this right, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And they sent me a wee, a wee leaflet with the, with the wee pin. And it's shortened to EDS, thankfully. And um, there's no cure. And the reason that they have the zebra is, and I love this, especially coming from a medical background, it says, so why a zebra? Doctors are taught, when you hear hoofs, think horses, not zebras. In other words, think of things that are, you know, traditional and clear, not things that are off the wall but zebras exist and rare conditions are missed with a little aware awareness we might help to spot the zebra and I was asking um, them you know how, how does it manifest what what way does it come and um, he sent me an email and I just want to read a few wee bits off it just I don't want to get this wrong and um, he said there can there can be um, joint dislocation and pain Reynards, which of course is the, your, your hands when the circulation isn't good in your hands and you can't get heat back into them. Brain fog, soft stretchy skin and gastrointestinal issues. Um, and as I say, the, the, the diagnosis can take years and years to be picked up because it's not the obvious thing that you think of. And um, he, I don't think they mind me sharing this wee bit. But Angela, his wife, um, had the symptoms when she was 23 and it was only when she was 36 that it was diagnosed. All of that, maybe even thinking you're going a bit mad and you're dealing with that the whole way through. And I've actually highlighted a wee bit of the email me sent. And it's, this condition is not curable, but is manageable. Good diet and exercise help with the physical side. Crafting for therapy aids the mental side as well as the physical and they even say crafting was, was recommended by their physiotherapist. Imagine if more doctors and physiotherapists recommended crafting. You think through the pandemic, what, I mean, if I hadn't have had knitting for my mental health, I don't know where I would have been. But I just really want to bring that condition to your mind. You know, there's so many people have, have you know, are suffering and sometimes they have to suffer in silence. And um, if, you, if you're in that way inclined, they've now got a bag, a shopping bag, a reusable shopping bag, and then they've got the wee pin. And um, just to bring awareness to this, um, this condition, it's not even, it's not curable. I noticed in one of her photographs, um, Angela does walk with a, with a um, crutch. I imagine she has good days, bad days, and worse days. Um, but... Just so thankful that we can um, have just such kind people when they're going through so much themselves. And to think of me whenever, you know, hopefully, you know, a few more weeks and I'll be back, I'll be coming through this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted them to know that we, you know, as a knitting community, we care about these things. And um, yeah, that's, that's, um, I'll hold it up because I won't be able to say it. Elos Danler, Danlos Syndrome. And um, if you have the funds or the means, um, these wee pins and the wee bag would be an amazing way to just bring um, it to people's attention and maybe less people would have to suffer for such a long time. Whew. There we go. Do I need a wee drink? There's another wee gift. Look at that. Look at this. That was, that was um, gifted to me as well. I am spoiled and that's why I want to pass it on to some few other people. Right, we've got a few more minutes. I have been tagged on two things and because of time I'm only going to do one um, I'll do the one the next time and I've been tagged by lovely Dawn of Dawn's Days if you don't know Dawn go and check her out and uh, she lives in the Netherlands which is from Manchester and she she tagged me in the six bucket list knitting patterns can you imagine how I would ever ever narrow that down so this is going to be a world I mean I was joking with her it was like 
judges houses on the x factor or um trying to pick you know my favorite child you know it was as bad as that so i decided i would pick uh patterns that i have yarn for i'm not going to show you the yarn today i'm just going to whiz through these patterns and um i'll show you the yarn next time you'll think what a stash i have so the first pattern is the little boxes socks by summer Lee knits okay that's the little box of socks by summer Lee knits and I will go through these another time as well my next one is the Este I'm really into the short sleeve tops at the minute very plain little top with a beautiful lace a beautiful lace detail I'm going to put this Okay, that's number two. Then the worst photograph ever in the world, and it's a free pattern, is the Celtic Myths um, Fingering Shawl. It's a lovely, it's a plain shawl with lovely, the lovely Celtic knots at the bottom of it. I thought I could get through these that quick. Then um, the Gentle Wave Shawl by um, Thistle Glen Designs, before I forget, oh my goodness, my brain. Anne has given us a um, discount code, imagine. And the discount code for any of her patterns on Thistle Glen Designs on Ravelry is Ruth20. So even if you didn't win the, the shawl, you can get her shawl and this beautiful, and her, her patterns aren't expensive in the first place. Um, with Ruth20, I'll put it on the screen, and um, you get 20% off any of her shawls. But that's the Gentle Wave Shawl by Anne Tucker of Thistle Glen Designs. Okay. Had to have a Stephen West in here. You ready? Take a deep breath. The Slip Stravaganza Blanket. And no, it won't be done in hand eye yarn. And then the last one, which is a bit of a curveball, is the Novelli Tea. And that is actually the only picture that they've done. I've got, I bought a kit of oh, maybe two, three years ago for this by Boylands Networks. Um, 2019 that came out and um, I got a kit. So that's my six patterns. I'll put, make sure they're all in the show notes. But next time I'll show you the yarn that I'm going to do with those. <sighs> Have you made it through? Have you? That's it for the knitting. Just let me check. Yep. Um, Dawn, I didn't do that um, justice, um, but I will I will pick up on that. And I am meant to tag someone else, and I tag that naughty Fernanda from um, Little Monkeys and Me, because she's tagged me in, I think it's 11 or 12 questions, which will be done next time as well. Um, and um, she never let me know. So there you are, Fernanda. I tag you. You're it. And um, I um, I pass that over to you. So yeah, we'll we'll talk about those more um, later on. But you know me, I have a few more slotted in between of knitting all those. Listen, if you've made it through this far, you've done great. Um, even though we've talked and talked, I do want to just finish with a wee bit of encouragement from the scriptures. And if that's not your thing, I understand. And I see you next time. God bless. If you do stay, or you've plugged in again. I just want to talk about, um, are you a procrastinator? I can be a terrible procrastinator. I go between being a procrastinator and wanting things done now. And I think many of us are like that. And, um, you know, especially as knitters, we just want to skin up the yarn and get started, even though we have 25 whips on the go. How many times have you said, just one more row and then I'll do such and such? Or me, for, for three years now, I said, after I get my operation, then we'll do X, Y, and Z. But now I'm saying, after I recover, and my kids have said to me several times, well, me, you said whenever you recovered from your, you know, and you put off till tomorrow. Maybe you've said, right, when the pandemic restrictions lift, then we'll do A, B, and C, X, Y, Z, whatever. You know, my mum used to be a teacher, and children, when they were leaving primary school, used to go to her with their autograph book, do you remember those days, and get the teachers to write little sayings or little quotes in their books. And my mum used to put in everybody's book, never put off till tomorrow, what you can do today. And you know, as far as 
you know, your life's maybe been in this these last 18 months. You know, maybe it's made you think about your life and what next and what faith means to you and what happens after we die. Maybe you've thought of all of those things, but you haven't, they've bugged you, but the, you haven't done anything about it. Well, I want to say today is the day. Don't wait. You know, um, I pick out every month my Lucky Dip Cal um, box and I've picked it out this month, but I haven't knit with it because um, the one I picked out was from Gardener's Cottage and that's lovely Kaz of the We So and So podcast and had so sadly lost her husband so suddenly and unexpectedly and it just reminded me Kaz we send our prayers and our love to you absolutely and we pray that you're doing really well you've got your family around you and you know we just send our love but it really made me re remember that we don't tomorrow's not promised tomorrow's not promised you don't know what the future brings and you know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, it says, For God says, at just the right time I heard you, on the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. And you know, if you have been thinking about these things, about faith and about, about what happens, you know, after I die, don't let another day go. Don't let another day go before you ask um, Christ into your life before you say Lord I'm sorry for what my life has been I'm sorry for all of that we would say sin all the wrong things that I've done all the the way I've lived so far away from you and I want you to be the center of my life and I want it to start now you know there's no bells and whistles you just have to ask and just really really mean it and really try to live for him we are not perfect that that doesn't make us perfect. We'll still do things wrong. But we have a wonderful heavenly father who is forgiving and loving and he will forgive you. And if we're truly sorry, as I always say, if we're truly sorry and we mean it, he has promised that he will save us and he will take away those sins and he will guarantee us a home in heaven someday. No more doubts, no more worries if we live, we're living for him. Don't wait. And don't wait till I'm better living. Don't wait till I've done this. Don't, I'll, I'll do it after I've enjoyed my life. I do, don't do it. Don't wait. Do it now. Come as you are, warts and all. And you know, despite maybe, maybe you are a Christian, maybe you do know that Christ lives in your life. And, um, you know, we should be thankful the restrictions are lifted in most places and, and, you know, people are getting their injections and all the rest of it. But maybe you're really shocked about how anxious and worried going out and being normal again makes you feel. Well, I want to remind you of a wee verse that you'll know and those maybe who are just coming to the, the point where they realise they need Christ in their life. You know, he doesn't just save you and leave you. And in Joshua 1, it says, This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He is at your side. When you go out and you're, I know some of you have had panic attacks being out in, in, in the real world again. And just remember he's there. He cares. He knows. And he's right by your side. And if I, as I always say, if I can help anybody in any way, email me, get in touch. Obviously emailing is is. Don't be leaving your message down below um, if you want some help. Get in touch, email. If I can explain anything about what I've just said, I have five minutes to talk about something that is obviously um, hard for some to understand. Get in touch. I've never regretted my decision to let the Lord have his way in my life. And um, it hasn't stopped me having fun. I have had plenty of fun. Um, and I pray that today, today will be the day that you realise your need to have God as the captain and um, director of your life. Right, I have talked long enough. If you're still with me, thank you so much. I hope that you'll maybe, if there's someone in your life who needs a wee, wee pick me up, a wee pay it forward, let me know. Um, and um, I hope that you'll join with me next time um, for another Nitty chat and um, above all, y'all keep on knitting. Thank you so, so much um, and we'll talk soon. God bless.